Hello, welcome to the ID Systems showroom. My name's Edward Stobart and I've been working for ID Systems for 16 years and one of the most frequently asked questions in my time is whether or not I should go for a sliding door or for a folding door or now the latest invention, the slide and turn system. Okay, let's start with folding doors. So this is our SF55 thermally broken aluminium door system. This particular configuration is three that will stack to the right. So this first panel acts as a single access door. And I've now just clipped that onto the outside and then I can simply, using this other handle, fold and stack them all to this right hand side. So the beauty of the folding doors there is they will get an aperture completely open. So if your priority is making the most of that opening, then they're well worth considering. And particularly I think if it's a smaller opening like this where you want to make the most of it, then they are often the best solution. Sliding doors on the other hand, our edge system here, can do up to three meter panels, whereas the bifolds would offer you around up to about 1.1 meters per panel. So this system can give you much bigger panes of glass. So if your priority is less frame or glass, then this really is worth considering. This particular configuration is three panels where two have gone behind a third to give you a two thirds opening. So if it's a larger opening, maybe you don't need to get it completely open. Two thirds might well be enough and it means in the winter time when they're often closed and it's acting as a window, it's going to give you a much better vista with small framework and large sections of glass. So, with folding doors versus sliding doors, it's not necessarily which is the best choice, it's which is the best choice for you. And that brings me on to the latest offering, which is the slide and turn door systems. The slide and turn doors really do have a foot in both camps. They offer these very slim sight lines that you would associate with sliding doors, um, but get it completely open like a bifold. So maybe if you're torn between the advantage of the sliding doors and folding doors, the slide and turn door might well be the solution for you. So as I say, it will get it completely open. So each panel is individual and will stack to the same side. Nice, simple, smooth running gear. So, nice, neat stack of doors at one end. The slide and turn doors, one advantage they have over the other two systems is the versatility, because it might be the fact that you don't want to completely open your doors. You might just want to get some air into the room. So what you can do is open up one panel and then spread out the remaining panels to create some gaps all the way across your opening. Just like so. So most people want a level threshold from inside to outside, so that means that when the system is installed and the project completed, your internal floor level and your external ground level and your track are all at the same height, giving you a lovely appearance, avoiding a trip hazard, and also giving you Part M compliance for wheelchair use. And it's the look that generally most people see on in brochures and on television programs. So what are the things to look out for? So one of the most important things is knowing what the depth of the track is because your builder needs to build your base work in relation to your floor level at the correct height so you've got enough distance to accommodate the track so it's not just an, enough to say right yo i want a flush track it's knowing the person knowing who's building it what the depth of the particular track you've chosen is other things to find out is if the track is sat down flush is there a compromise to its weather rating or is the weather rating unaffected because that can be a big issue particularly in a more rural exposed location. 
We find that most people are aware of U values and most people are aware that it's the lower the U value the better. So typically building regulations are after a door that has an overall U value of 1.8. So the lower the better and um, our Vista line slide and turn door system for example comes in with an overall U value of 1.1 being triple glazed as standard and having a very large thermal break from front to back. Where the ratings are concerned with how well the system seals both from a water penetration point of view and an air leakage point of view and U values do not look at this so we do see where the ratings as important as U value. So do find out what the weather rating is of the particular system you're buying and don't be fobbed off with, yes, it's weather rated. Well, what does that mean? We, you need to see third party certification stating the actual performance of these door systems or window systems from a weathering point of view. The pressure tests are measured in pascals. To give you an example, 300 pascals is the equivalent of a 50 mile per hour wind. So I think you, you should at least be looking for a system at 300 pascals or in excess of that because most people will suffer a 50 mile per hour wind if not more depending on their particular location. But obviously if you're an extremely exposed coastal location where you'll suffer winds far in excess of 50 miles per hour then obviously you need a system that can perform to a much higher pascal rating. Security is important for most people. Um, with our edge system here it has a five point multi-point locking system all easily operated at waist height we have two high spag locks, a central claw lock, and then two low spag locks again, all simply operated here via this snib turn. And the best thing I can say about ID system sliding doors is in our 20 year history, no one has ever broken in past an ID system sliding door. But do make certain that you get, again, the third party certification. So. With ID Systems, our door systems have been tested by BSI, the, the Kite Mark people, and also by Secured by Designs. Again, a security test endorsed by the police force. So obviously one of the biggest parts of this investment in these door systems that you're looking at is the glass itself, which obviously dominates the area of these doors. Let's talk about the standard spec. So to comply with building regulations, any glass that is within 800 mm of the floor, which most door systems are, has to be a safety glass, which can either be in the form of a laminate glass or a toughened glass. So as standard, your door glass will be safe. So laminate glass, if broken, like windscreen glass, will stay in place and toughened glass, if broken, will break into very safe pieces, so no, no shards um, to hurt people with. The other thing that will be a standard is thermally efficient. We have one of the most strictest building regulations in the world when it comes to thermal efficiency, so all the glass will be a standard low E, which is a low emissity coating, also known as soft coat, um, and that's designed to retain the heat that you create and keep it inside your living space. In addition to that, the sealed units will contain a gas, typically an argon gas, again designed to retain the heat to make the doors thermally efficient. So that's what you're getting as standard. So you're getting a good high performance glass spec um, in the base price of any door system that you're buying. One of the biggest upgrades we do on our glass is solar control glass. So if you've got a large area of glass, particularly if you're south facing, then what you don't want to happen is the room getting too warm. So you, you can now buy glass that reduces solar gain and it doesn't necessarily have to be tinted. So the vast majority of solar control glass we do is what's referred to as neutral and that's because it still maintains a very similar look to normal glass so it's not like looking through sunglasses it still lets plenty of light through 
Typically, standard glass will allow about 80% of the light through, and our solar control glasses will still allow 70% of the light through. Um, but only 35% of the available heat compared to normal glass that's going to allow in around 70% of the available heat. So it's fantastic for keeping the room cooler but still letting plenty of light in. Another glass available is low iron glass. This gives you extra clear glass so when glass is made it contains iron and this is why when you see an edge of of glass such as when you've seen a mirror at home it has that green tinge to it that's the iron content when you make glass with less iron in it it gives you extra clarity so if it's a north facing darker or sheltered location where you need to push the light levels as much as possible then low iron glass can be a really good solution um, we touched on laminate glass earlier so there's lots of different types of laminate glass so one thing to look out for if you are doing a complete new build or material change of use build such as a barn conversion all the easily accessible areas such as your ground floor locations and anything else that's easy to get to on a first floor such as having a flat roof garage outside an upstairs window needs to contain security laminate glass to comply with the latest building regulation which is part Q um, so one of the panes of glass, if you're under new build regulations, needs to be a laminate glass. And also, if you're concerned with security and you're not under that regulation, that's obviously something you can still do, even if it's, you know, just a, an extension. And finally, the ordering process. So, there's two ways you can order these systems. You can either manufacture the doors to an agreed size so you usually via your builder or architect tell the likes of ID systems the width and the height of the openings that they're going into or once you've built the openings a surveyor can come out and measure up those openings so what are the advantages of both so with the making to an agreed size it means you can start the process as soon as you can give us those sizes so Rather than having to wait for the opening to be there and have it measured, as soon as you know your size, you can get things underway. So that will often come down to the confidence of your builder. Now we think most builders should be able to build a square opening to a certain size, but, but it, what it will come down to is whether they're confident enough to s tell you the sizes or your architect is. So that's an offering which is the quickest in time. It's not something we'd recommend when you've got angles such as triangle shaped gables or curves in your design. That's when you definitely want a survey, um, but it's certainly the quickest method. And the other more traditional method is once you've built the openings, a surveyor can come out. So the advantage of that is the surveyor will take responsibility of those sizes. So that um, side of things is, is taken off your shoulders. And so, you know, we're happy to work either way to whatever suits your particular scheme both. And it might be that we survey certain openings that you've got ready and then we agree a size on the other. So you can have a sort of bespoke combination of those two solutions as well. And very important thing with ordering is what is the lead time and what is the lead time at present? So find out what your lead time is so that you can know when you either need to get those openings built for the surveyor to come in so, so it affects the program of your build or know when you need to tell us those sizes if you're not having a survey but keep tabs on the lead time because the lead time for most companies will fluctuate throughout the year so do ensure that you know what your lead time is and keep keep checking with the company from time to time to see where their lead time actually is. Because if you were, if it was six weeks back in March, it could have crept up to seven or eight weeks um, when you're ordering in October. So do just keep an eye on things like that. At ID Systems, we use all our own fitting teams and we manufacture these doors ourselves. So giving us complete control of the process from start to finish.